U.S. President Joe Biden has hailed the Democrats' performance in the midterm elections, calling it a good day for democracy. But he's acknowledged that Americans are frustrated with the political divide. Republicans are inching towards control of the House of Representatives. But Mr. Biden noted that a giant red wave did not materialize on Tuesday night. Either party could still win the Senate, which hinges on three races that are too close to call. Votes are still being counted in Arizona and Nevada, with results not expected for days. The party in power usually suffers losses in a president's first midterm elections, but exit poll data suggests voters may have punished Republicans for their efforts to restrict access to abortion. Well, we had an election yesterday. And uh, it was a good day, I think, for democracy. And I think it was a good day for America. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a little horse. Our democracy has been tested in recent years, but uh, with their votes, uh, the American people have spoken and proven once again that democracy is who we are. President Biden. And buoyed by the better-than-expected midterm polls, Mr. Biden, who turns 80 this month, said he plans to stand for re-election in 2024. Our, our intention is to run again. That's been our intention, regardless of what the outcome of this election was. Um, and uh, the fact that we won, we, I didn't run, the fact that the Democratic Party outperformed anything anyone expected and did better than any uh, off-year presidency since John Kennedy is one that gives everybody like, whoo, sigh of relief that the mega Republicans are not taking over the government again, et cetera. And uh, so uh, my judgment of running when I announce, if I know my intention is that I run again, but I'm a great respecter of fate. And uh, this is ultimately a family decision. I think everybody wants me to run, but they're gonna, we're gonna have discussions about it. And I don't feel in any, any hurry one way or another. What, to, to, to make that judgment what today, tomorrow, whenever, no, no matter what the, 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 my predecessor does. Next year or early next year? Or what's your, well, what's I, your I, thinking? My guess is I hope Jill and I get a little time to actually sneak away for a week around between Christmas and Thanksgiving. <laughs> and my guess is it'd be early next year we make that judgment. But it, it's my plan to do it now. I mean, but, you know. President Biden. Well, for more on this, let's speak to Arise U.S. correspondent Eric Ham, who joins us from Washington. Good to see you, Eric. So Joe Biden increasingly written off in the run up to the midterms. But now, as he prepares to turn 80 in a couple of weeks, he's been addressing what's coming next. And he wants to run again in 2024. What's your analysis of that? That's right, Charles. Even though we still haven't counted all the votes for this midterm election, and we're still looking to see who will control the House, who will control the Senate. And it's undoubtedly clear that Democrats certainly had a good night. But Charles, all eyes now are turning to the race for the White House. We already see that Donald Trump is beginning to take shots at Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who, run in a, who won in a runaway victory also uh, to get reelected to uh, become the governor of Florida. And so while many are looking at a, a sizable battle to take place between those two in the Republican primary, many are looking to see if, in fact, there will be also a Democratic primary. Will the current occupant of the White House, Joe Biden, Joe Biden will he actually stand and run for reelection? While he says he wants to, while he says he's going to, he doesn't seem to be saying it with much conviction. And I think many Democrats still aren't so sure, aren't clear if in fact he is prepared to run. But nevertheless, what we are seeing here is that Democrats are certainly emboldened and they believe at least heading into the 2024 elections, they have the win at their backs. Well, I mean, some have suggested, Eric, that both Democrats and Republicans need new leadership and that it's time for a generational change in both parties. What do ordinary Americans think about that? 
I think Americans uh, overwhelmingly agree. You're right. When you say, look, Joe Biden, uh, if elected to a second term, will go into his second term as uh, the oldest uh, president in U.S. history. In addition to that, you look at Donald Trump, who was only three years younger uh, than Joe Biden. So it's clear that we're talk we're looking at two uh, very uh, two two very uh, two very old men who are running, and many Americans believe that it's time for new new blood. One of the, of course, one of the reasons for that, Charles, is because now we are seeing uh, people ages thirty and under uh, came out in droves and voted in this midterm election. And so, given that you're now seeing a sizable portion of young voters uh, be, be become increasingly active, uh, they want to see people who are speaking to their issues, who are speaking directly to them, and who are who are uh, equally engaged and energetic about the issues confronting the country. And so uh, while many are thinking that there will be a, or should be a change uh, at the top, it's unclear if in fact both Trump and Biden are ready to walk away. And of course, on the Democratic side, there is certainly no shortage of candidates given uh, we saw how successful a number of Democrats were in these gubernatorial races during this, these midterm elections. Uh, Gretchen Whitmer, who got won re-election in Michigan, Josh Shapiro, who won uh, the gubernatorial uh, race in Pennsylvania, as well as uh, Gavin Newsom from California, Pete Buttigieg, the current vice president, Kamala Harris. So no shortage of possible candidates if, in fact, Joe Biden decides to walk away. And uh, Eric, uh, you mentioned uh, Donald Trump there. Let's turn to him, the New Yorker, which used to support Mr. Trump calling him a vote repellent and saying the GOP should fix this. Uh, that's quite a turnaround. How do you think these midterm results might affect Donald Trump's next move? Well, you know, I think after Tuesday, many Republicans are waking up and finally coming to the realization that Donald Trump, aside from his stunning 2016 win, has been a drag on the party. The House, the Republicans lost the House in 2018. They lost the White House and the Senate in 2020. And it looks as though Democrats are going to gain additional seats in the Senate this time around and are struggling to take the, the House. In addition to all of that, if you look at, at the state level in places like Michigan, Massachusetts, Minnesota, and other places, we saw where Democrats uh, flipped House and Senate uh, chambers to become completely democratic. So right now, many believe that there is a need to change the MAGA conversation. Of course, the question is, who's willing to actually get in the ring and take on Donald Trump? Right now, while many are saying it quietly, there are very, very few people that are actually saying it publicly. Okay, so votes still being counted, the Senate still too close to call, and the Republicans heading towards a much smaller majority in the House of Reps than they were hoping for. Eric, you're a star. Thank you very much indeed. Eric Hammer, US correspondent, talking to me there from Washington.